Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today, I'm bringing you my friend and my guest, Nini. So she is a meditation practitioner and also a person who will hold space for you and guide you through your tough times. I first known about Nini through the app Inside Timer. You know the meditation app that I talked about so much. Yeah, that app. So one day I was just browsing for new meditation guidance and her profile popped up and I was like, okay, let me give it a try. And I loved it. So I thought to myself, oh yeah, that was great. And two weeks later, I found out that my friend Beck is actually a good friend of hers. So Beck is the creator behind Conscious Combos. I actually interview her as well. You should check out her interview. Anyways, when I found out that they're really good friends, I was like, I must get in touch. And then our friendship just grew from there. And I am so thankful that the universe has brought us together. Now, no matter what age you are at in your life, I know that you're going to enjoy this episode. Nini has shared herself and her stories. She shared her suicidal trauma experience, her bullying experience, and obviously her story and how she got to where she is today as a meditation practitioner. So my loves, if you're someone who is facing depression or maybe bullying or maybe loneliness or unworthiness, please continue watching. Or maybe you are a parent who is wondering how you can be there for your child. Or maybe you are a friend or a colleague. You know what? Doesn't matter who you are. Just continue watching because you never know who in your life would need your light. Maybe this interview will bring you whatever you might need. Now, because Nini and I had such a great chat, she even shared about how you can move to Bali if you ever want to live there. And she also shared a few tips on how you can be more intuitive. So this episode is going to be in two parts. I will highly encourage you to watch both of them because Nini is going to provide a nice meditation practice at the end and you are going to love it. So enjoy! What would be the top three questions that you would suggest people to ask themselves more when they are in that negative state? I would ask them to ask themselves where is this coming from? Mm. Mm. Where is this coming from? And and maybe it's a certain experience or maybe it's a certain sensation in the body. You know, if you ask yourself, where is this coming from? And you feel like pain in your liver, then that's, you know, signifying anger because because your body holds emotions and certain organs hold certain emotions so like the liver is with anger or like you know the left side of our body is the feminine side the right side is the masculine so if you can really just be in tune with your body then you're like okay there's something that i'm feeling and all of this is available on the internet as well i just want to share that so you can actually look up a chart and see where the sensations or the pains and the discomfort is coming from in certain parts of your body and it relates to an emotion yeah, so knowing that, I would also say, mm, so where is this coming from? What stories are, am I creating around this? Because a lot of the times we're just creating stories. Yeah. When someone treats us badly, we're creating a story in yeah. our minds. Yes. This person is treating me badly because they're a bad person. You know, mm. they're unkind. Or, you know, or maybe I'm not deserving. I've done something wrong. So how can we understand the story that we're creating? Um, yeah, that's an important one. And hmm, the third one would be, how can I love myself more? <laughs> yeah, how can I love myself more when I'm feeling this way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where can I turn to? Who can I turn to? What can I do mm, to elevate myself again? Mm. Yeah, those yeah. are beautiful tips. Thank you so much. <laughs> so for those who are listening and watching, honestly, start journaling and ask these questions to yourself. And I really 
really like the first question, like where it is coming from, because if you just sit and tuning with your body and just sit there and your body will tell you and literally every part of you will just be like, ding, 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 this is what's happening. And yeah, like sitting by yourself is so important. Now, because you're so amazing at holding space, would you like to tell people like what kind of service that you offer? Yes. Um, so I off well. I'm so, like I said, I'm so blessed to live in Bali. It's such a healing space. Um, but I find that the biggest part of my purpose and my mission right now is to serve people, you know, over the internet, over Zoom, um, because so many people around the world really, um, you know, need that that energy and I'm just becoming a bridge, a channel from mm. Mama Bali, healing energy to yeah, certain parts of the world. So right now I am holding moon circles, so meditation circles. Every new moon and full moon I hold a meditation on Zoom and mm. it's purely donation based. Um and I do private uh one on one mentoring sessions. Mm-hmm. So you know, whatever it is that you're going through, I offer guidance, I offer support, and I hold space. And I also infuse my um, healing, um, you know, gifts into that as well. So I'd uh, guide um, you on, you know, um, like a meditation practice that will, you know, heal and activate your chakra senses, your energy points. Um, yeah, so I do that. <laughs> uh, those are the services that I offer. And then I do like private um, meditation sessions too. Yeah. Yeah, so to help you work on whatever it is that you're going through, if it's like, you know, relationship wise, or if it's a blockage in your throat, you feel like you've been having trouble with communication. Um, I, yeah, I allow you to um, experience the healing through me because I'm not healing. I just want to make it clear that, you know, healing is like I'm not healing you. I am becoming a channel for you to heal yourself. Mm. Yes, yeah, so that's um, the main things that I'm offering uh, right now. So meditation circles as groups and as privates and uh, private mentoring sessions. Yeah, and I'll be having an actual um, mantra course coming out. It's a four-week process. Every week we'll meet up and I'll give um, everyone a mantra Mm -hmm. and we'll repeat this mantra every day. And this is what I mean by, you know, cultivating a self-practice. So... In the morning, you'd have to repeat this mantra and then at night and then any time during the day if you feel like you really need the mantra to support you. And if you don't know what mantras are, mantras are certain vibrations, tones and words that connect you to certain deities, goddesses or consciousness, oneness itself, and it allows the, the healing and the manifestations and everything to occur through your being. Mm. yeah because at the end of the day everything is sound and vibration you know yeah. so when we chant when we say these words we're literally healing and manifesting um so yeah so that's a four-week journey um yeah when does so that kick off that will be kicking off actually in about two weeks i'll be launching that soon so, so you're free to go welcome yeah, yeah, middle of October. Can people sign up after October? I. It will be a full week, and then I'll most likely have it again. But yeah. it probably won't be the same mantras. Um, yeah, because different mantras, different meanings. You know, create calling creativity, calling in love and abundance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it will be. It'll be a great experience. And it's, it's a group one, so, you know, holding it in groups is really important because you feel supported. And it's so beautiful to connect with people, you know, that you don't know yet. Um, yes. 
Yeah. So for those who are listening and watching, if you you know if you feel like something has tingled inside you and feel like oh like this is something interesting, all the details will be in the description below. And if you just want to check out the amazing work of Nini, you can you know like we said check out Inside Timer. Like honestly, the app is free. You don't even have to pay the membership. Just check it out. It will help you so much. Um, with just now, you told everyone. Well, you have told everyone that you're in Bali. For those Australians who might be interested to, I guess, moving to Bali as well in the future, would you mind to tell people what the process was, please? There, there are a few ways. So, coming in as a tourist, you can like obviously stay thirty days, but then you can extend to sixty days、um, with visa on arrival. So that was what I was doing at the beginning. I, as soon as I arrived to the airport, I asked for an extension, and then I had to go to immigration to extend it、um, at thirty days and get an extra thirty days. But then after that, you'd have to fly out of Bali and then re-enter to repeat the same steps. But because of lockdown,、um, they've been so generous to allow us to stay for you know a period of time、um, until all of this is over. But I got I have a key task now, so I、um, have an investor company here, and so I can stay for two years. So that's also an option. You can get a business visa for six months. You can open up a company here and stay up to two years.、Mm-hmm. Yeah,、um, yes.、Yeah. But if you need information about、um, visas or anything like that for the future, you can reach out to me、um, because a part of my、um, company, my process, is actually helping people with visas. Yeah. Yeah, and. The other company that、um, that I have is like healing. It's a healing technology company. Yeah. So we're we're working with like retreat centers,、um, and yeah, contracting, collaborating with a lot of people here to provide healing technologies to、mm. measure their nutrients, like a health evaluations. Yeah.、Um, measuring people's chakras, meridians, and things like that. So that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, that's the process. Thirty、um, days, sixty days, business visa, and Kitas. Kitas、yes. allows you to legally if you end up wanting to work here. If you enter on a normal visa, you cannot work. Yeah, and also if you need help for those who are listening and watching, Nini, like she said, she has a side company that can help you. So just get in touch now. I feel like one this year probably has a lot of challenges that came your way. But would you mind going back, maybe like the last five years? What do you think you have overcome? Let's say the top five things you have overcome. The top five things I'd say is the first thing overcoming my ego. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. My ego. For sure, because when I was young, oh, you know, social butterfly, ego, you, all that, and you know, I've always been like a, a kind, and loving person. But you know, e- ego, our ego identity is always going to be a part of us. But learning on how to become friends with your ego is the most important aspect. And recognizing when your ego is playing out, you know, like recognition. Like, if you do something, why do you want someone to recognize you? That's your ego wanting recognition. You know, but if you do it from a loving space, then you don't actually need that recognition. You don't need that award. You know, because you're doing it from your heart. It's not from. It's not from ego. So, I feel like yeah, the last five years is. Going on my spiritual journey and understanding my ego on a deeper level and how it chooses to show up and play out,、um, and recognizing it when it does, and it's like ah, this is cheeky. Like I see what you're trying to do. Yeah, 
You know, I was like, yeah. I see what stories you're trying to create for me. And it's like, actually, I don't want to operate from that. I want to operate from a from this space instead. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The ego is not the enemy. There's, like, quotes out there that's like, ego is the enemy. No. Ego is your friend. Mm-hmm. It's your ally. You need your ego there. You cannot get rid of your ego. You can dissolve your ego and build a relationship with it, but you can't get rid of it. Mm. I don't know. That's what, that's my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you become enlightened or something, then yeah. But, you know, it's it's a journey. So most of our lives, we're going to be operating with, with, our, with our ego. Um, yeah. So that's so the, first that was the first thing. The second thing, uh, I would say I've overcame is relationships like relationships with people relationships with my family with um ex-partners um and relationship with myself but also with friends too um you know understanding that our the depth and the beauty of our relationships are a mirror of the depth and everything within us. Mm. Mm. So that's taught me a lot um, going through very, very challenging relationships and overcoming them. Yeah, Yeah, it was huge, huge. The third thing um, I'd say I would overcame is... I need the courage, the courage to really walk my own path, weave my own path, and live my truth. So when I moved, left everything and moved to Bali, my parents were not happy with me. They were just like, oh my gosh, you left left your degree, you left a, a... really stable job you left good money you left all of this you left us <laughs> to like go there like what are you doing there like you know and I was just like it was so hard to explain it to them because they wouldn't be able to understand it in terms of my lens and my experience so I stopped trying to explain to them and I just lived it instead so that was a huge thing that I overcame was my parents, my, the relationship with my parents. Yeah. Um, but now um, this whole experience, this whole self-love journey and creating my own destiny has allowed the relationship with my parents to really flourish. I feel yeah. so much more connected with them than I ever have. Definitely. Because I've built that connection and that love within myself and now they could experience it through me Mm. Mm. yeah and i've learned to not yeah to not make anyone understand just to just to be that just to be an example and allow and allow people to experience your experience through you as a being as a soul i love what you just said just be and be an example because whatever we're doing doesn't matter what it is somebody is actually secretly watching you and learning about you doesn't matter Mm -hmm. if it's a good thing or a bad thing for example if you choose to maybe do drugs i will highly not I will highly recommend you not to do that but if that is part of your journey then i respect you but somebody else is watching you, just FYI. And like what Nini said, like she just have, you know, chose her path and just do it. And yeah, everyone else is also living through it. So thank you so much for choosing yourself and choosing your own path. And it sounds like you are very intuitive with literally everything. So how, can, how do you think people can be more intuitive? Yes, I'm so intuitive. (laughs) I'd say meditate. Meditating allows you to discover so many parts of you and it allows you space, 
space yes. to understand yourself and space to hear. Mm. Space to hear your calling, your truth, mm. um, what needs to be done, mm, what what doesn't need, you know, to be done. There's nothing maybe you didn't need to do. Um, so I'd say meditation is key, is key and being in tune with nature, building a connection with nature. Mm. You know, if it's that walking outside with your be- with bare feet, grounding yourself in the earth and just listening, listening to the birds, listening to the, the leaves, experiencing it as, you know, as souls, as beings, as consciousness. It allows you to discover like this GPS that's within you because nature is always guiding us. Yeah. If you really pay attention, um, yeah, nature is always speaking to us through yes. geometry <laughs> and also through numbers, mm. through frequencies, through vibrations. We just have to listen. We just need to have make space to listen and to not be distracted. Yes. I guess in a way I will also highly encourage people to be more open-minded to things. Like for some people, when you listen, when you hear these, you might be like, oh, that is just like woo-woo stuff. You don't want to be- believe it or whatever. But the key word is you choose not to believe it. Like you can surrender and try it out and see what it does for you because it might bring you to another journey. So speaking of meditations, would you be willing to guide those who are listening and watching maybe like a five or 10 minutes meditation. Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes. Okay, this is going to be a really short one. Because the thing is, like, when I lead meditations, I, I become a pure channel. So, like, five minutes is really short for me. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> normally, I guide very long meditations. Um, so, really? I, I try to, let me tune into what, what the universe wants me to deliver, okay? Okay, so you can do this meditation with me. Okay. Hmm. So finding a nice and comfortable position, either sitting up straight with your spine elongated or laying down somewhere comfortable. And once you're in your comfortable position, I'd invite you to bring your awareness, your focus on your breath. And taking a deep inhale through your nose and exhaling out of your mouth. And inhaling through your nose and out of your mouth. And again through your nose with an audible exhale. <sighs> now just keep that breath going. Nice and deep and allowing your body to fully relax. And I invite you to set an intention for this beautiful practice. What is it that you would like to experience? What is it that you would perhaps like to create, to manifest in your life? And just plant that intention into a tiny little seed and visualize yourself planting this seed into the earth beneath you. And 
Now I want you to visualize this seed being nourished, nurtured, watered every day by you. And as the days go by, the weeks, the months, maybe years, the seed starts to grow up your body, through your legs, to the base of your spine. Moving up through your tummy into your heart space. And with each inhale, feel the seed being nourished with unconditional love. with compassion and kindness and patience. Our heart space is also known as the portal to our souls. Whatever we think of, Whatever we feel or believe, if we can synchronize that thought, that intention in the space of our heart, we will be able to manifest it into our physical reality. Because love, Love is the highest frequency. So now I want you to feel any elevated emotions that you could think of, that you could feel, whether that be joy, happiness, Peace. Again, love. You just really, really feel that in your heart. Allow it to just grow and expand from the depths of your soul to your organs, to your bones to your muscles, cells, to your skin. And allow that to expand and radiate out into your environment, into your auric field, and into the people that you get to connect with in your space. Allow that love to permeate through your entire being and into the world. What does it feel like to embody unconditional love? And now I want you to visualize that seed moving up past your shoulders through your throat, to the space 
in between your eyebrows, where your third eye, your intu intuition sits. And now imagine that seed blossoming into a beautiful lotus flower and moving beyond your third eye to the top of your head to your crown center a connection with the divine with the higher consciousness, with the universe, however you want to call it. And now just allow that intention, that vision of yours being projected out into the atmosphere. Now just wait, just be patient and allow the universe to work its magic. Taking a deep inhale through your nose Sending it out to the universe and exhaling. Knowing that whatever your heart desires will be able to be manifested into this physical reality with love patience, clarity, and kindness, not just to yourself, but with others. Inhaling through your nose again, and an audible exhale. And when you're ready, just bring your hands together in prayer position, placing it on the top of your head and repeating the words, may there be peace to all. Hands to your third eye the center of your eyebrows. May there be light to all. And to your heart, may there be love to all. And just rubbing your palms together, generating some heat. And just placing your palms anywhere on your body that needs love and attention, healing. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes slowly and just witness, witness everything in your life as magic. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're I'm welcome. sure everyone enjoyed it. And they got an experience of what you do. So I'm sure they are going to be so keen to get in touch with you. <laughs> Yes, come experience my energy anytime. <laughs> well, before I ask you my last question, 
Do you feel like there is anything in particular that you would like to talk about? Mm, I feel that one thing I'd want to share is, you know, I want to really, really invite and encourage anyone listening to listening to this to continue to do the work, to do the self work, to sit with yourself and to experience yourself whether that's through discomfort or pain or through joy and to really really put in the work to become a better version of yourself even if it's hard yes because it all just takes practice everything is practice seeing your life as a training ground because when you can just just imagine yourself living in alignment, in full alignment and serving your purpose, your dharma, mm -hmm. and seeing how that could help so many people, mm -hmm. helping humanity. Because when we do the self-work, we're not just helping ourselves. We're not just shifting our own reality, but we're shifting the whole collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. When you can do the work for yourself, you're doing that for everyone else. And that's something really, really important to remember because we're all interconnected. We're all a part of this beautiful symphony, this orchestra. You know, this, we're all made up of atoms and molecules and particles. We're all just, we're all just one. So if we can learn to see life through oneness that I am no different than you you are no different than me I am no different than this piece of leaf this this tree this flower um, you know this phone this laptop we're all just made up of the same material just in different forms mm -hmm. um, so when you can really just start to experience and see life through that lens you would be able to really experience life through very, very mystical ways. And um, life just becomes effortless. It becomes graceful. It becomes easy. And you'll, you'll, you'll realize that, you know, you are so much more capable. You're so much more strong, like, stronger than you thought you were yes yeah yeah so that's that's what i wanted to share from the depths of my soul um that you everyone are just divine beings of love yeah. whatever it is that you're going through you're encountering or experiencing come back to love yeah think about what love feels like mm. Mm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's all I'm going to share. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding everyone. Like, you're right. We are just one. And I feel <clears throat> some people might be feeling like, oh, but I can't be spiritual. Or I, I feel like maybe you are doing it from a, I would say, scarcity state because you are not ready to let go but that is okay you know like there are people out there that is willing to help you and feel free to contact us and remember that you are not alone and if you want to find your purpose and if you yet to find it um there is still time like don't feel like you're running out of time and that was a very beautiful reminder. Yeah. I just want to also add on to the beautiful thing that you just said is that we're all spiritual beings. <laughs> okay? Like no one is spiritual. No one is not spiritual. No one is more spiritual than another person. We're all spiritual beings. We're spirits living inside a human body a physical vessel 
but it's your experience, your depth of spirituality that you want to explore is what's going to, you know, create your mm. reality. Mm. So knowing that, yeah, we're all, you're, we're all very, very spiritual. Mm. Mm. And, re and it's coming back to really remember that spiritual, that essence within us. Because growing up, we forget that true essence of who we really are, we experienced it as ch as children, as this pure soul that just came onto this earth and seeing everything with curiosity, with love, with compassion, with truth and authenticity. But along the way, we've been programmed to steer away from that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. my instinct for you is to, yeah, understand. To just to recognize that and i also love what you said like you know that you will be able to experience love with uh, in a mystical way like it's so true because i feel like once you open up your heart to other things <laughs> um you honestly will live life with i, I don't know just full joy <laughs> just ask yourself where what why am I limiting myself? Why am I creating myself this story of that is so spiritual? I don't want to experience it. I don't want to go to yoga. That's not my thing. Like, yeah. you're everyone is just always not, I can't say everyone. Okay, let me reframe that. People tend to limit themselves because of fear. But really learning to step into that fear and seeing what can blossom out of that experience is a true gift. So how can you let go of those stories? How can you dissolve those stories and see what can be created from from opening up from opening up? Continue to open open up to life and stay open to life. Stay yes. open to yes. Things that come into your field, into your mind, into your aura is for a reason. So just take on the invitation. If someone invites you to do a dance class or a yoga class or a meditation class, just be like, you know what? I'm going to try. I've had these beliefs around it or I'm closed off to it, but you know what? I'm going to surrender to this experience and see what can grow from this. Mm. And I really believe that what will grow out from this will be really beautiful. Yeah. So just don't have a doubt about it. Just trust, trust your gut. Go mm. with the flow of life. Mm. Taking on new experiences yeah. is, the, is, is truly the medicine. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if you give it a try and if you find out that you don't like it, at least you have given it a try. And, exactly. yeah. <laughs> well, my last question for you is how do you think we can be there for each other in general? Other than working on themselves. <laughs> Showing up. Showing up? Ooh. For Showing themselves or for other people? <laughs> for everything. For you, for others, for for the world just showing up as your most authentic selves yeah. showing up you know with your gifts with the yeah. things that you love with the things that you that you enjoy and just share that yeah. share that essence with with people yeah. if you love to sing or if you love to create art share that mm. yeah Share that through social media, and then th this is what I say: you're using social media as a tool, sharing that art, you know, from from your soul, and just putting it out there, and allowing people to experience through you. So that that would be what I'd say: just continue to show up, show up yeah. for life every single day, whether that is in your pain or discomfort, or as your most joyous self. Yeah, show up as you truly are yeah that's the best thing that we could really do to support each other because yeah. you never know what thing that you like you know maybe you said you say this one thing and that really really hits someone's heart really deeply yes 
you know, and that's helped that person. And then that person says that to another person and another person. So what you're doing is you're creating a ripple effect. Yes. You just don't know where your wisdom travels, where your gifts travel, where your love travels. So just, yeah, I'd say show up. I love it. I like that. Be there for people. Be there for others. Yeah. Um, put out put out content onto social media that can help people. Yeah. And in so a way, I feel. Yes. Yeah. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. I feel like in a way it will also help the person who is posting as well. Because when you help exactly. others, you are helping yourself too. You know what? I love the way that you say showing up because the other day I went out. And uh, there's this person, his birthday is coming. And I was like, oh my God, what are you doing for it? And then he was like, do you want to know the truth? And I was like, okay. And he's like, I never had a birthday party because I have this fear of people not showing up. And I was like, oh my God. (laughs) How vulnerable was he? I was like, wow, that is good on you for being so vulnerable. So beautiful. Yeah. Like, honestly, that is what I truly appreciate the most from people, from yeah. conversation. Yeah. Is you know, actually, I'm having a really bad day. I'm not feeling great. Um, or I have these fears. Mm. Because when you can really show up as you truly are, you give permission to other people to also be who they are. Uh-huh. You know, and then you allow this channel to open up and, you know, the healing happens through being vulnerable. Because him saying that to you, oh, I have this fear of people not showing up. And then maybe one thing, something that you said was like, actually, people are going to show up. You know, giving people the belief, boosting people's uh, esteem up, you know, lifting other people up, you know, helping them. And maybe you being the person that rocks up you know who knows how things will unfold but that that's how that's how um that, that's just the beauty of life it's really yeah. experienced through the realness through truth and all authenticity yes yeah so that's all start showing up for others for ourselves and be more open yes thank you so much nini i really loved it Welcome. I feel Welcome. like my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me and allowing me space to just speak from my heart and sharing my love to the world. I don't know who this is going to reach, but I'm excited um, on yeah how all of this will evolve and spread um so thank you yeah thank you so much how beautiful was that meditation guidance did you enjoy setting an intention for yourself i will highly encourage you to rewind back to the meditation section from time to time and set a new intention maybe daily weekly or monthly up to you just bookmark it I also love how Nini reminded everyone to show up, to show up for ourselves and show up for other people. On that note, I just want to say that you are amazing. You have showed up for yourself for however many years that you have lived. Amazing job! So continue to show up for yourself and for other people. Your kindness acts can inspire others no matter how small. If you're interested in digging deeper to connect with yourself, I will highly encourage you to sign up to the 5-day self-love program. The link is in the description below. And I will also highly encourage you to join the private Facebook group where you can find supportive, uplifting, accepting people who will cheer you on through the tough times. The link is also in the description. Alright, if you have enjoyed this episode, please do screenshot this and share it on social and tag Nini and I. We will both really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe, click the thumbs up button if you have loved it, and share it with someone because you never know what they're going through or what they might need. Maybe all they need is a meditation guidance today. And remember, 
You are amazing and you are not alone. And I will see you next time.